Body found in St. James River, believed to be that of Lucy Jill SKP. The body of a man pulled from a river in the vicinity of the bypass road now under construction in Irwin is believed to be that of one of the escapees from the Lucy lockup over the weekend. The body was taken from the river by the police and firefighters on Monday. It is being theorized that the man was shot and killed sometime between Sunday night and early Monday morning. A police source who spoke on condition of not being named disclosed that they believe the body is of one of the two men who escaped from the lockup in the early hours of Sunday morning. The other man was reportedly taken back into custody after being arrested on Sunday. The police have not officially released the identity of the deceased man as yet. There was also another incident during the night that the St. James police were called upon to investigate. According to reports, on Monday at 12.10 a.m., residents stumbled upon a body and summoned the police. Upon the arrival of the lawmen, the unidentified man was seen with gunshot wounds to the upper body. He was transported to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Security guard found guilty in Haley Clarkin murder trial. Sean Cole, the security guard on trial for the 2017 killing of 38-year-old Haley Clarkin, has been found guilty. The verdict was handed down in the St. Elizabeth Circuit Court in Black River on Tuesday. The jury trial started two weeks ago on July 15. Cole is scheduled to be sentenced on September 20 in the Home Circuit Court. Clarkin, who struggled with bipolar disorder, was shot dead by Cole in his home, Parish, on June 23, 2017, after climbing on an armored truck. His death sparked outcries that an innocent life was taken, as well as appeals for more public education on mental health. Cole was granted bail in the sum of $1 million when he made his first appearance in July 2017. Clarkin, a York University, Monroe College, and Manchester High alumnus, is said to have touched lives as a student, as a journalist and educator. Man accused of chopping cousin ordered to pay 40k following mediation. A man was ordered to pay $40,000 in restitution to his cousin after his unlawful wounding case was referred for mediation during proceedings at the Kingston and St. Andrew Court on Tuesday. Tariq Simit is facing charges after he allegedly chopped his female cousin on her finger during a family dispute on July 12, 2024. During court, the complainant told senior parish judge Paula Blake Powell that she would be willing to have the case referred for mediation. The accused agreed and the matter was stood down while a counsel who presented them in court took the cousins outside to speak. When the matter was recalled on Tuesday, both parties agreed for mediation was successful and they had agreed on the sum that Simit would pay. Judge Blake Paul then ordered that Simit would make payment beginning August 2nd until August 30, 2024. The cousins are expected to return to court on September 9 to confirm payments were made. Simit's bill was extended. Paul will want Electricity Act to include provisions to address emergency situations such as hurricanes. Opposition spokesman and energy Philip Powell has suggested that amendments to the Electricity Act should include provision to address emergency situations such as hurricanes. His comment comes as many Jamaicans remain without electricity following outages caused by Hurricane Beryl. Speaking during a meeting at the Joint Select Committee that reviewed the legislation, Mr. Powell said there is a gap in the Act which must be addressed to ensure that provisions are in place for emergency situation. Meanwhile, Energy Minister Darrell Falls reminded Mr. Powell that disaster response falls under the operation of the Office of the Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, which is spearheaded by the Ministry of Local Government. I wanted to make an observation in relation to some of the gaps that still remain. And one major gap are provisions dealing with emergency situations, such as a hurricane. And I realized that we did not touch that at all in our deliberations. And I believe that it would it would be useful for us because the time is so long drawn in terms of review of this law that I, I think it might be best for us to just do a complete work. And I don't think it will take an awful lot of time to ensure that appropriate provisions are in place in relation to emergency situations and what we do. We have to recognize emergency situations for what they are.
in relation to what you're saying, bear in mind, member, that disasters don't fall under any other area than the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management. So we have to be careful in relation to what we are proposing and how that ties into the whole issue of disaster and the, 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 the legislation that is now in place which puts it squarely in the Ministry of Local Government for the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management. What I don't want us to do is to get sidetracked from what we have been mandated to do and then obviously get go outside of our boundaries and then get held up. Some JPS customers to receive 40% refund on estimated bills stated or the Office of Utility Regulations is reporting that customers receiving estimated bills from Jamaica Public Service Limited will get a 40% refund as it has approved a mechanism for calculating these bills following hurricane burial. The decision follows a July 22 meeting between the OR and JPS after the lotto notified the public about issuing estimated bills to some customers due to its inability to access meters in some areas especially those badly damaged by burial. JPS advised that the billing cycle, which commenced on July 8 and as to July 22, 4,850,000 bills were issued, of which 122,000 customers were billed based on estimated consumption. A further 226,000 were yet to be issued, of which 56,000 were to be billed on estimated consumption. Even though GPS is authorized to issue estimated bills, it must be recognized that this arrangement was constructed for normal conditions. Under circumstances where many communities have no power for the majority of the building period and are already feeling the financial fallout with the restoration of their homes and livelihoods, it cannot be fair for them to be asked to pay for more than what they consume, stated or Director General and C. Hewitt. Following inquiries with GPS about customer impact and available alternatives to soften the building bill impact on consumers, the ORCs, it agreed to a wavering of the mechanism for calculating estimated bill, specifically for customers impacted by extended outage. The objective, it says, is to lessen the impact on persons who could bear an increased financial burden if the prescribed regulatory methodology was used. It points out that approval of a 0.6 factor of the consumption estimated base on the last three actual readings to determine the net consumption would mean a 40% reduction of the average for customers. These customers would be billed at 60% of what JPS estimated. For customers with smart meters who were not already billed, the OR also granted approval for JPS to use the last recorded reading. JPS is required to indicate to the OR how it will deal with those customers who already receive estimated bills in July as they should also benefit from similar treatment. Turning to the other discriminatory measures for customers, the Director General took note of and commended JPS announcement to relax its collection and discollection process. JPS is to facilitate flexible payment arrangement for customers who need extensions on their due dates. JPS to make further provision for customers who have had not legislated since September 3rd and would not consequently benefit from the 20% discount. Regarding the telecoms provider, as at July 29, Digital has restored service to 96% of its mobile customers and 98% of its fixed services. For Flow, 92% of its mobile customers have been restored, along with 91% of home service. Additionally, Flow has advised that it will go against the provision of its standard terms and conditions to offer, among other things, one-time rebate to customers' account whose fixed services have been interrupted for more than 72 hours, and an extension allowance of 5 GB for one month to its postpaid mobile customers. This will be rolled out in August. Digital has also advised OR of the relief measures it has implemented for its customers, which include no payment for lost days of service for its prepaid and postpaid customers who were unable to connect to its network since hurricane burial. Prepaid customers been given a bongo consisting of one gigabyte of data and 30 local minutes, which will remain available throughout July. However, special accommodations are in place for customers in the areas where service is not restored in July. The suspension of late fees on bills due to the payment on July 27 for its post-bill customers. This is in addition to the aforementioned rebate of lost days of service. The OR says it welcomes this move and continues to exercise its regulatory functions 
to ensure that the utilities restore services within the timelines to which they committed. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.